All right, and it's the top of the hour. Let's go ahead and get started. I wanted to say um, everyone, good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you're dialing in from today. And welcome to today's webinar, Back Office Minimalism, Streamline Your Admin Tasks and Give Your Business More of You. By the end of this session today, you'll come in away with an understanding of how technology can give you back more time in your day. So before we begin, let's go over some housekeeping. We love questions. We want this to be as interactive as possible. In the Q&A section of your Zoom panel, please feel free to type in your questions as we go along, and we'll address as many as we can at the end. And as you can tell your presenters, they're working in different offices. They're all remote, so please excuse any background noise. And let's introduce ourselves without further ado. My name is Kara Rajapaksa. You can just call me Kara. And I work primarily with OnPay's accounting and bookkeeping clients to make sure that their experience with us is as streamlined as possible so they can focus on what they do best. That's good. Thanks, Kara. Derek Jones here with the deputy team. I want to apologize in advance. My background sound you're likely to hear is the little kitten Pepper who um, has no boundaries. So uh, I apologize in advance. Turn it over to Savannah. Yep, also same here. I was gonna give you guys a heads up. I have a little puppet nugget or puppy nugget um, and he is going a little crazy right now. He has the zoomies, um, but I'm the lead partner consultant over here. Really, I'm on introductory calls all day um, with individuals like yourself, just making sure the deputy's going to be the best fit with your needs. All right, let's go over what you'll be learning today. And maybe if we're lucky, we'll see, um, we'll see an appearance by one of the office pets here. Um, but we'll begin <laughs> by talking about why moving to the cloud is the right move, time tracking tools that save you time and no pun intended there, uh, how you can go paperless for HR and give your employees what they need to answer their own questions, take the stress out of payroll with automation, get the big picture of your books with accounting software, and lastly, get those questions answered. So let's take a look at some survey results in the next slide, because when you do the math, I'm curious, how many hours a day, week, even a month are you spending on back office tasks? I imagine no one is starting their business with dreams of hours spent on ad and work. And if you do, a little nerdy, but that's okay. <laughs> um, in a survey we did with more than a thousand small businesses, we found that owners are spending almost 40 hours a month just for payroll and HR management tasks alone. So add in other administrative tasks, you can easily spend more than half your time in the office keeping up with a paper chase. But when own, owners are able to pivot, they're able to use other software, software, whether that's for payroll, timekeeping, accounting, we found that you're freeing up more hours in your day, they're able to give more of themselves to their business, they're feeling more confident that they're in compliance and that things are gonna be taken care of on the back end. Derek, take it away. Yeah, I, th I think the survey results are interesting, right? Because the data then suggests, I like to break it down more simple. In a given week, it sounds like 10 hours of 40 hours. And we know small business owners are working way more than 40 hours. But let's just say on a 40-hour week, you're spending you know, 10 hours, 25% of your week on something that's repetitive, right? And so I think the, the, the question we like to ask ourselves and remind ourselves is, like, how do you see yourself in that data? what tasks are you spending that only you and you uniquely can do maybe as the business owner that probably could be passed off. Um, I'm reminded just yesterday, I had a long conversation with uh, a retail business who owns just a single retail store, about 25 employees. And about a year ago, he was doing all the back office functions, um, you, you name it, from inventory management to hiring to posting of jobs to scheduling to approving payroll to doing all the accounting. And he was originally a bit reluctant to um, make any changes because he said, hey, number one, that sounds like a lot of work. And number two, I like to play golf on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, and a third, he actually said, hey, I, I already make a pretty good income. Like, why, why would I want to do these things? And so I, I think it's good, a good primer to remind, like, why should we sort of tune in right here on the webinar and try to find one or two things that might be able to free you up from some of those admin tasks? Because when you adopt software, and we'll talk about connecting those softwares, you have more data, you can make better business decisions, and whatever you choose to do with that, whether it's more profit, more family time, um, you know, is it, certainly your choice. In, in this example, I joked with the, 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 the owner of the retail business, 
well, so does this mean now you can spend five days a week on the golf course? Because the, the result was a year later, sales were up 20%. He promoted his two best supervisors to take on some of the stuff he thought only he could do. They raised their 401 contribution and he didn't quite admit that he was spending five days on the golf course, but I got the suspicion that for him, not spending as much time in the store was a goal. Maybe for you, you're at a different stage in the business, you need to spend more time there. Um, but you want to free yourself up. So the, the question here is, where do you see yourself in that data? Where are you spending time where things are repetitive that could be focused on growing the business? And then when we, we talk about like specifically what can streamlining do for you? So this is in context, how software can streamline operations. There's a number of things that, that are probably pretty self-evident but thinking about, I'll pick out a pool, uh, 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 just a couple of these here. Um, the, the third bullet here is something that I just mentioned. Where are the time stealing tasks in your business today? These are things that you probably are doing by habit. Probably you could train someone to do, but either you haven't actually written down a process to do it and there's not a system in which to help someone else in the business do what you do. And so um, streamlining can certainly free you up um, in, in that way as well. Um, another bullet on here is um, seeing issues and addressing them quickly. When, when your data is in a, a place that you can easily reference it and actually make decisions, it allows you to see a little bit around the curve versus we, we know what it's like to be a small medium business owner. I, I've been one before. I've uh, worked at and owned a franchise in my background as well. And so I know it's just like day to day, you're coming in, picking up the phones, phones are ringing, you got people issues. And it's very difficult to get even two or three days ahead of your week. It's like, if I can even think a week out, that's, that's sort of like, you know, very rare. But if you have data um, and you're able to quickly access it, then you're able to see a little bit around the curve. You're able to see two or three weeks away, maybe a month out and just start to get a little bit more proactive planning. But of course that involves you having not only the data, making it accessible and being able to make decisions that are simple um, to make and without having sort of a PhD in statistics. And the last one I wanna pull out here is just um, when you are streamlining your tasks, think about specifically the, the, the stat that Kara mentioned, which is 25% of time is being spent on just payroll approval. And so what are the steps that are causing you, if you were to break that time, that 25% of your week, the, the 10 hours of the 40 hours, if you're to break that down, what part is that? Is that the time capture portion? Is it, hey, you're having to follow up with the manager to determine, well, hold on, this looks a little over. We didn't have this unplanned overtime. Or is it that you're manually punching time punches into a, a payroll system? Um, or are you manually cutting checks? Right? I mean, these are all things, but I, I like to break things down to really simple components. And so I would think about that specifically. What, is, what are the tasks that are, what are the time stealing tasks? And if you break those down into smaller components, how can you pick off one or two of those things to really help free you up? Or could you, uh, sort of uh, grant someone else in the business the authority to take on some of those items. Awesome. Yeah. So as I mentioned before, I'm on introductory calls all day, just making sure that deputy's going to be the best fit. And the most common conversations that I have are with those who are using Excel or pen and paper to track their employees' time or even the schedule as well to schedule out their employees. Um, and the number one way to simplify that shift work um, for yourself as well as your employees is truly to move to the cloud. And so I love going over this with prospects so that, you know, you can just share some of the value of how much time you truly can save, you know, yourself and your employees when it even comes to them checking their schedule. Um, so the cloud will, you know, allow you to access your software anywhere at any time, especially now with employees working from home, um, or if you're just someone who's constantly on the go, you're able to just check that mobile app and, you know, see everything right there. Um, we'll also help reduce it out, reduce errors and save time. Um, you know, a lot of conversations I have is, you know, employers struggling with even cross-referencing employee unavailability with the schedule. 
Um, so I say that's a simple task. It's truly uses a lot of brain power. So that's something we're trying to take off your plate. Um, and then also being able to track and collect precise data um, in real time rather than, you know, yourself or uh, a colleague of yours to have to manually process all of that data, whether it's the same day or, you know, at the end of the week. Um, so just being able to access everything right th then and there, and then also being more secure with only you being able to access the relevant information that you need, as well as just keeping a digital audit trail. That's also very important as well. Yeah, there's, a, there's a really good point, Savannah. I, I'm, I'm taking myself back before I was, you know, working at a software company with Deputy. When I was a franchisee, we used to have uh, the on-call person over the weekend literally had a suitcase of paper this was the schedules and i remember when i was first getting trained i saw some of the staff come in monday morning my first day with a suitcase and i was like hey did you just come back from the airport and they're like no no this was the this is this is what we take home for the on-call schedule and i just i couldn't believe it right um and and it it actually touches the last point that savannah mentioned which is um at one point during my five years there uh the suitcase got lost and had a bunch of information of clients and it was just you know um just just a real mess to sort of resolve. And so I think um, just to, to follow up on what Savannah mentioned there, I think it's, th think about where is paper in your business? Wherever there's paper, there's probably a better process. There's probably a cloud solution. There's probably some, not only getting rid of paper and ink and printing costs, et cetera, but there's probably a, a, probably a better way to do it, a more secure way to do it. And for all the other benefits that Savannah mentioned. And, and once all of those, the, those areas where you're using pen and paper or you have manual tasks, when you connect, we call these connecting the clouds. And so the clouds, just this concept, of course, of taking your paper processes and having it online, right? I mean, this is, um, if you didn't have the cloud, you'd have to call a hundred friends every week in order to see what they're doing, but you have social media apps, right? I mean, these are simple examples. You would have to actually get in your car and go to, I mean, who's been and dropped off? I mean, if you're a business owner, you might go drop off cash, but for personal reasons, do you get a physically mailed check to you anymore? And do you have to then take that check and then drive to the bank to deposit it? No, because there are cloud solutions for these things, right? And those are big improvements and just little um, areas of just repetitive tasks. And so when we, when we say connecting the clouds, we mean um, the, the manual process you have today, there's a solution for those processes and then making sure that those clouds are connected. Um, Savannah mentioned one point that I'll just double down on. It's like, um, you know, Deputy sees this a lot, which is um, having separate sets of information, or maybe it's in a scheduler's head, which is, hey, my, this employee only wants off, Mon you know, only wants to work Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I hire this employee for 20 hours, and then they submit for leave. But this person has, you know, college schedule, or this person has the kids, you know, th this weekend. They're trying to put all that stuff together. And then there's like the paper Excel schedule. And this is why it takes so, so, so long to actually create even just a simple schedule, even if you're just copying and pasting the schedule over. There's tons of other examples out there. And we'll, we'll cover a few of the benefits of like connecting an HR platform like OnPay and, and Deputy is scheduling time and attendance with the, the accounting solution as well. But the, the takeaway point here is wherever you have paper, there is likely a process and a program that can help you with that. And then when they are connected, you're able to make proactive decisions because that data is all there. Not only is it an improvement in process, but it's an, an improvement in your ability to make decisions quickly. And that's what, uh, that's what Deputy does. So you know, more specifically, that's what um, Deputy is, our mission is really to simplify shift work. Um, we do that by offering scheduling, time and attendance and a communication platform all in one login, very mobile friendly. So we, we, we looked at the registration list just prior, uh, over 100 some registrants, and there's all kinds of businesses on this call. There's painters, I, veterinary clinics, I saw um, like uh, uh, Mosquito Joe's, on, I saw all kinds of uh, brands on here. Um, so you all have different types of hourly workers, but effectively Deputy helps um, businesses with hourly workers schedule, make a good schedule using data and not so much uh, just guessing and copying and pasting and then accurately punching time and then sending that into a system like OnPay who will take care of paying people accurately, correctly on time and getting that into an accounting system. I will pass it back over to Kara. 
Absolutely, thank you. Well said, Derek. And we know before you get to the point of actually tracking those hours, making those shift schedules for those employees, there's a process too for advertising an available position, hiring and onboarding a new employee. What we found is that cumulatively, business owners kind of busting out the numbers again, but they're spending an average of 18 hours a month on HR alone. So what we wanted to look at is how can you do HR well? How can you stay compliant? How can you avoid liability without spending too much time or money on it? So that's where we found starting to put the cloud to work for you is really advantageous. So utilizing an HR software or management program is gonna help you with centralizing your documentation. So it could be from storing an applicant's resume or keeping an employee's I-9 and W-4 on file, which really, honestly, you should be doing it anyways. Keep it on file for at least three years. Uh, but you're able to keep clean records in the cloud. And should there ever be a dispute, should there ever be an audit, you've got everything in one nice, neat system. And then also just staying in compliance. If you have e-docs and easy sign-offs for things like uh, dress code policies or non-compete agreements, you're remaining in compliance. And what Savannah mentioned earlier, you're also keeping a paperless audit trail, which is super important. And security wise, it's super important too. Plus, not to add too much onto that, but there's also uh, federal, state, local requirements that you need to be aware of as well. So an example I always like to use is there's some states like the state of New York, they require all employers to provide employees with an annual interactive sexual harassment training. So first, if you're in the state of New York and you go, oh, I didn't know that. HR software is going to be helpful for you for that reason alone. But also you may be wondering, is there a virtual option for this that's available for your employees? How am I going to be able to track it? How am I going to be able to document that my employees took that course and fulfill that requirement? And that's something that HR software can help you with. Keep it all in the cloud. You're able to keep that documentation there. And it also uh, helps standardize that onboarding and offboarding process for employees. Your employees, they're able to fill out everything in the cloud at their convenience online. This is going to save time for both of you. And it's also going to uh, avoid having you to print out papers, reinvent the wheel, you know, keep a file cabinet. Everything is all consolidated in one. And then also kind of going along with that, you're empowering those employees, give them access to a portal with their HR data because they can make changes or initiate changes from there. They can view reports, they can request paid time off, a whole lot more there if you're giving them that ability to answer their own questions and it's gonna take the burden off of you. And then finally, you're able to make changes, updates, view data from anywhere. Um, a lot of employers we're seeing, makes sense, right? They're moving to a work from home model so you can skip running into the office to find, find something in the file cabinet. You're able to pull reports, track things like PTO, uh, notice trends, make the most informed decisions for your business and personnel. But let's take a look because speaking of payroll, speaking of extra work, payroll is one place where some employers, uh, rightfully so I feel like, they feel a little intimidated, confused, they're worried about the cost of getting it wrong. I see it all the time. Uh, that's why payroll software is really there to help we can make sure that you're getting the basics right with fewer mistakes. And mistakes in payroll, they tend to have a trickle down effect. It's not just, okay, this one off, I need to adjust the hours. You're gonna need to make corrections. It could potentially cause friction with your team, especially if they were underpaid. And you potentially have to also correct tax filings, which I'll tell you um, can sometimes, no one really likes to do that. So get those employees paid correctly the first time and then also on time to boot. And then if you think of deductions like child support garnishments, cafeteria plan, medical benefits, bring it on. And outsource payroll software is going to really help you there. They're going to make sure that those are calculated correctly. Those are reported correctly. And then this is also automating that compliance. A good payroll system is going to take complete responsibility for making sure that federal, state, and yes, even local taxes, I'm looking at you, uh, Indiana, Ohio, Michigan, a whole lot more there. You want to make sure those are paid and, paid and filed timely to avoid notices. And we already know that payroll is already one of your biggest expenses. So using a payroll provider means you can easily pay employees by direct deposit, you're also not going to be surprised with a hefty tax bill at the end of the quarter. Most payroll providers, they're drafting for those taxes as you go along so you're able to better manage your expenses that way. And then it can also make you eligible for pay-as-you-go workers comp. So um, you're not paying this annualized premium. It's based on projected payroll earnings. Who wants to do that? It's easier to pay accurately, pay-as-you-go in segments as you're processing payroll. 
And then finally, if there's a theme of the day that at least I keep harping on, um, it's documentation. Keep your payroll records in one place for you and your employees. So one solution for your payroll and HR needs, and that's right, we do HR as well, so it's all inclusive, and it's also a solution that was recently named PC Mag's Editor's Choice for Payroll is on pay. 98% of our clients would recommend us, one low fee for everything that we do, you're getting payroll that checks all the boxes, so we're taking care of the payroll tax payments, payroll tax filings automatically. You don't have to request us to do that each quarter, each year, each month, depending on the state. And then you're able to pay both employees and contractors in minutes. And we've also got an error-free guarantee. We always have your back. We're taking complete responsibility. And we also integrate with your favorite time and attendance systems, including Deputy. And we have accounting platforms that integrate with us. And if you want HR and benefits in one place, we're able to help with that too. So it's all bundled into the same low fee, no extra levels or add-ons. You get free implementation. I used to work on the implementation team actually. So let me know if you have questions about that. Uh, free support and your first 30 days are free. So I feel a bit like Oprah. You get free 30 days, you get free 30 days, but it's true, all of you get free 30 days. All right, let's take a look at the books. So I love numbers. I work with accountants and bookkeepers all day. Um, you've hired your employees, you've managed their schedules, you ran payroll for their hours worked, Let's take a look at the big picture with accounting software because it's super important. So utilizing an accounting software like Xero or QuickBooks or one of the many other platforms out there, it's going to give you a picture of your business's financial health in real time. It's especially important if you're trying to obtain a loan or maybe financing from investors. And you're also able to easily track expenses and monitor growth while having a clear idea of your business's and employees' output and cost too. So make informed decisions. And if uh, accounting seems intimidating, it can be. So working with an accountant, bookkeeper, consultant, an accounting system is going to allow you to grant them access to view that data remotely. And they're able to spot trends or problems before you're able to. And then just kind of that green push there, um, besides being a greener alternative to paper invoicing, a lot of accounting platforms let you send digital invoices. You're able to update your accounts receivable automatically. It's oftentimes faster and easier uh, for your clients or vendors to receive. And then it's also faster for you to send to. It's typically you're reviewing it, confirm accuracy, click of a button, you have those invoices out of your to-do list and get paid. All right, so Savannah, what kind of questions should um, our business owners out there be aware of when they're evaluating these different programs? Yes, absolutely. I love these slides because, you know, myself being on the phones when individuals come with whether these questions are already answered um, or they have these questions themselves, I know they know what they're doing. So I recommend starring this slide and making sure that you review all of these before setting up a call with anyone like Kara or myself so that you have the best idea of what you're trying to accomplish going into the call. Um, and then we can just really share how we wanna help. Um, so this first question of when it comes to service, what pain points am I trying to solve with the software? have those points ready to go when you're hopping on a call with someone so you can say this is what i'm trying to accomplish can you guys handle that and can you truly help me um what is the implementation process look like so just like kara you know is there a price associated to it on pay there is not deputy there is not when it comes to implementation so just making sure um what that process looks like so you can make sure to get a game plan in place of when you're trying to have all of this rolled out by um as well as just knowing the price associated with it because i know some companies do have that implementation fee um and then you know feature questions such as is there multi-user capability or will my employees be able to access every other employee's pay rates within the system um the answer is of course no with on pay and deputy um but you know just making sure that that capability is in place so that like i mentioned before you are able and only you are able to view the relevant information to everyone's specific role. Um, and then when it comes to user experience, making sure that it's user friendly and you know, even see if a company offers a free trial. Um, Deputy definitely does. And but you know, just being able to get in there yourself and kind of click around and get a feel of the software, that's truly going to help make sure that you are, you know, making the best decision for your business. And then, yeah, so when it comes to time and attendance, payroll, accounting, HR, these are just some great questions to ask. So how will this sync with my existing systems? Of course, like Kara mentioned, we have an integration or deputy has an integration with OnPay. Um, so just getting a better understanding of how 
you know, everything flows to and from, where do we set everything up? Um, our teams are here to help with, answer all of those questions for you. Um, when it comes to payroll, our wages and payroll taxes calculated, withheld, and filed automatically and accurately? Um, or are you going to have to go back in there and, you know, do some manual work and spend more time on all of that? Um, when it comes to accounting, does it capture all of your financial activity? Um, just making sure that you're able to have all of that documentation there, as well as HR. Can employees onboard themselves, or am I going to have to handhold them throughout the whole entire thing? Um, does it does it sync employee details like leave balances and time off requests? Um, you know, where where are employees going to enter in that information, and how like how are we going to pay them for that time? Um, so definitely suggest starring those two slides um, when we send out this recording because those are great questions to really run through before you hop on a call with someone and even run through them with someone like ourselves who are more than happy to answer all of these questions for you. Sounds good. Well, I don't, um, you know, Deputy is fully 100% remote globally now. So I know a lot, of, a lot of you have some type of remote operations, but a lot of you are essential businesses as well. But that means I've been at the house a lot. I know a lot of other people have been, which means you sort of identify house projects that need to be done. And to sort of support the point of buying best in class, I want to share this quick thing I just went through last week. Um, so being home, I recognized that the home office needed to be painted. And so I had a couple of people come over and quote, you know, painters went online and Googled painters and looked at their reviews and they came over. Um, one of the painters said, hey, it looks like your gutters also need to be replaced. And he was right. He could tell they needed to be replaced. So I got a quote. His quote was good for painting, but was, um, I don't know, I guess it was okay. And said, hey, that's good. I work with one person. And he did the gutters. Um, and so far as I know, the paint job was good and the gutter job was good um, until, um, a, another person in the neighborhood came by who actually is in the gutter business sort of looked up and said who did those like you, you did you know that you know the uh, Roswell which is where I live actually requires rounded downspouts and that you need that like, there was like three or four things he pointed out that basically we had to rip the gutters off and redo the project so even if it was a good price I think the point here is I should get, have a gutter person do the gutters and have a painter do the paint. And I think when you think about all these software choices that we're talking about, one of the choice, the, the choice you will need to make is do you buy what we call a horizontal solution? This is, this might be, you know, one place to buy everything from hire to retire. And there's some benefits to that. But what, um, what often we hear is sort of you get a C plus or a B minus experience while they are all connected? Um, or do you, do you choose best in class? Do you say, hey, look, we have specific pain points. That's what Savannah mentioned. We're gonna go find the best provider who can solve these pain points the best. So we have those, so we actually solve the problems. And then we wanna make sure that they're connected, that the, if we buy separate solutions, that they're connected together. And that is the, the deputy at OnPay solution, right? Uh, OnPay being the best in HR and onboarding and payroll and accounting and the things that they mentioned in deputy on the scheduling and time and attendance solution. And so um, this is also isn't a very easy, even if you're a small business, we know this isn't always like a super easy thing because it normally like whoever runs the payroll uh, and uh, it makes the decisions for the time clocks because they said, look, I, I need to own punching time, accuracy of pay and on time payment. And they sort of leave it over to the operations team or the manager or the owner say, look, you can use whatever you want for scheduling, right? And so um, I think what we're advocating for, um, and we'll, we'll click to the next slide, which will um, take us into wh whatever you end up buying. We'll go to uh, next slide, please. Uh, there it is, um, is buying together, right? So if, if you have five people in your business, 15, 50, 100, it doesn't matter. Um, get your team involved in the decisions. Um, if the software provider offers a pilot, um, get, get all the way from, from you to the lowest level employee who might be hourly, seasonal, only working you know, in between the college. You, you want that feedback from the field um, and you wanna make sure that there's an involved process there. I think that's where we see a lot of implementations um, not be successful, not necessarily because the technology wasn't the right fit, but the business wasn't A, aligned on what problems they were trying to solve, um, and then B, they didn't get the right people involved because certain people have diff different contexts. Operations team's gonna have a different lens, payroll and accounting team's gonna have a different lens, 
and all the people in your organization will have um, very valid points and things that they want to bring up in order to help you make this decision. Um, and that's, uh, that leads us, we're about to go into the Q&A and that's um, just to recap, you know, that why we're running this webinar with, with OnPay is Deputy is, I would call us like the, we're in between the bookends, like what we, of HR, your HR tech stack. There's like hiring and then there's running payroll. Deputy sits right there in the middle where the scheduling and time and attendance piece, that's all we do. We do it really well. It's very mobile friendly. And um, the way that we work with OnPay is if businesses are interested, we run the concurrent 30 day trial. So that way you can test out both systems. You can turn the integration on. Deputy, um, also normally the most painful part of coming onto a system like Deputy is getting your Excel, paper, whiteboard, magnets. We've seen all types of schedules that are out there. Um, and uh, Deputy has a team that will just, as long as it's legible, we'll load all that data in for you. Typically within two or three hours, we'll give you a call and say, hey, let's walk through it. Maybe you test it out with a part of your team and um, you know, with your existing process, get the feedback from your team. Um, and then that's where it's nice. We, we're able to turn, flip on the switch. As you hire people, they go into deputy. As you schedule and punch time, those timesheets then push into OnPay in order to, uh, to pay people accurately. So that's how we work and that's how we work with, with OnPay. Absolutely. And to piggyback off of what Derek was mentioning, especially about the implementation, having worked on that team myself, I have received yellow legal notepads of taxes <laughs> from um, probably three quarters worth of data we can help you too, it's okay. Um, so we have free implementation that's available. Um, you're always gonna have someone that's available even to sit on the first call with you, free customer support. But yes, we are able to help you. We're setting the new standard in payroll, HR and benefits. So I recommend check us out at onpay.com. You're very welcome to sit in on a group webinar or a one-on-one -on -one session with someone like myself and get your questions answered. Um, or even start today. I mean, your first 30 days are free. There's no obligation, no cancellation fees. That's one thing that uh, we prioritize highly is being really transparent in our pricing. But from here, let's take a look at our questions because I do see that a, que a few questions have popped up and I'm really excited. So let's take a look at the first one. Uh, question from Jacqueline, how much is deputy monthly? All right, so, well, we're also transparent. Um, it depends, we have simple plans and it basically we look at how many users need to access the system. And it's between two and about $4 per user per month. So if you're a business that's got 10 employees, you're talking about, you know, anywhere between 20 and like 40, $45 a month. Um, and that's, you know, if you terminate employees or they go seasonal, you can deactivate them as well. And it's month, month to month. Perfect. Thank you so much. I'm going to mark that question as answered. And just to kind of um, mention for on pay side, $36 base fee, $4 uh, for the entire month's activity only for employees that you pay. So not the mad rush of marking someone as inactive, anything like that includes absolutely everything. So great questions. Keep them coming. Another question I see, what are some cons of moving everything to the cloud? Um, and I'm happy to field this one um, because I would turn it around and say that they're not cons, they're considerations. See what I did there? Um, I would say don't move everything all at once. I think having a really thoughtful transition, which is something that Derek also touched upon is, and what Savannah touched upon too, is know your pain points, then kind of stagger the transition. Don't move everything all at once to the cloud. I would say as an example, um, if I'm looking at a few different systems at once, Time and attendance is an easy start, right? Get started with deputy. Something like payroll, maybe you started on time and attendance and then you shift over to something like on pay at the beginning of a new tax quarter just to make it a little bit more seamless for you. So don't feel like you have to take it all at once. Have that communication with other departments there. And then another big point to drive home is I see a lot of confusion about user permissions, um, which is also something that Savannah mentioned is don't be granting out admin status willy nilly. I've seen it where people get in too much and then they're like, oh, I gave away the keys to the kingdom. I just granted this employee owner level access, but that's what they're there for. You've got multiple different tiers, ask about them, use them appropriately. And then it's gonna be a overall successful transition, I think at least. Derek Svan, I don't know if there's any other points you wanted to make, but <laughs> for that one. No pain, no gain. I think it's gotta start with just knowing, like you gotta, it's not worth, it's not worth doing it if you're not solving problems. So get, get the feedback from your team, find out where they're frustrated in these manual tasks, 
and then let that determine even what you buy. You may be deputy, maybe on pay, may not be that at all. I mean, there's, there's cloud systems out there for whatever probably the pain point is. Um, and the more you can make it your team's idea that you're doing this, probably the better they will adopt it. If you sort of come to them, hey, we're rolling out this new whatever system it is, doesn't matter, point of sale system, new whatever, um, the more it's their idea, you'll have an easier time getting it. They'll, and, and, and you'll be able to celebrate it as a win about something that you're investing in the business to help them do their job better. Absolutely. And then another question I'm seeing, it's um, a little bit more specific to payroll. What are some common payroll mistakes? Um, so a few of the ones I see misclassifying employees um, in a perfect world, no one wants to pay taxes, right? But there are certain requirements for characterizing someone as an employee versus a contractor. Um, so on that side, I would say some of the questions we see a lot in onboarding is, oh, is this person actually a contractor? You want to avoid penalties from the IRS there. Um, also, I think for a lot of business owners out there, just making sure that you're making payments on all the payments um, timely and doing the filings correctly. A lot of people, they either miss those deadlines or I've spoken to some employers that go, wait, unemployment tax, do I have to worry about that? Oh gosh, yes, we need to make sure you're registered with state unemployment agencies. So that's where a lot of software, it's gonna automate the compliance side because there's gonna be notifications when you're missing key data points um, for those type of regulatory things. All right, let's take a look here at some other questions. Um, question specific to deputy, it seems like shifting time and attendance. Um, Derek, you mentioned paper and pencil. What are some tips for getting people, both management and employees on board for moving to a digital solution? So how are you starting that conversation? How are you convincing people? Yeah, I think there, there's, um, the, the challenge is normally because people have done things on pen and paper, it actually works. It just takes a lot of time to do it, right? So oftentimes the business just doesn't recognize how much time they're spending in order to not make errors, whether it's like for scheduling a time attendance, it could be scheduling someone under overtime or complying with whatever the local labor, labor laws are. So I, I think the, the, the first thing that really helps grease the wheels for implementing is just being really honest about how much time it's taking. I mean, we see, uh, we, we often joke, but it's very much the truth. It's like normally the best, let's just, I'll pick like a retail store or I, I looked at the attending list. Let's just say it was like a vet clinic that's on. So normally like your best technician who's like on time is a, is a good, lead, good natural leader. People naturally gravitate towards her for questions and like leadership. And then what happens? That person finds that they got the, they get promoted. Congrats. And then they get the crappiest job in the business, which is to handle the schedule. And all of a sudden, instead of working nine to five, Monday through Friday, they now have to handle call outs and weekends and people's lives changing. And they're just like, what, like, is this really like worth it? Right. So I, I think, you know, if I go back to like what we were talking about, I think it's like really working with him or her, whoever is doing that and recognizing a, how much time are you spending doing this stuff? And B like what break those down into smaller components and let's go try to solve one or two of those things. Because if you try to just say, it's just sort of, it's too metaphysical. It's too pie in the sky, even though we're talking about cloud solutions and say, Oh, we're moving to the cloud. That doesn't really mean it. Unless you say, look, tell me the, all the things that, you're spending your time on, oh, interesting. Let me break that down into a couple smaller things and let me really understand what the root cause of that problem is and then go find the solution for it. That is typically what we find, it, you know, eases adoption um, is because one, you're being realistic that you are wasting time with a valuable member of your team. And then number two, you have to really assess, do a real root cause analysis of what is the real problem that's taking place here. Like, I mean, examples we'll see is like unplanned overtime. Right. And so businesses will say, uh, well, I see businesses come to us sometimes and say, you know what? I want the um, I want the time clock to prevent people from clocking in too early. Right. And we're like, OK, is that what's causing the overtime? And then when we look into the data, it's actually that their employees are not taking their planned 30 minute meal break. Right. So you got 30 minute shifts, 30 minute unpaid meal breaks that are factored in. So you have 30 minutes of overage, which is about like 12 percent of an eight hour shift. All of a sudden, you know, people are working, not only is your labor up, but overtime is up. So you could look at just a problem with overtime and there could be four or five different root causes. That's what you want to go to the vendor and say, look, we, we have this overtime problem. We need to know what it is and how to solve it. And, and that's the type of solution. That, that's the type of plan that we like to put together. Otherwise, 
it's just going to come off as being another thing that very busy people have to do and the business won't adopt it. Perfect. Great answer there. And then question specific to attorneys uh, time and attendance. Question from Lori. Attorneys log their time based on 0 0.10 hours. Can time be entered into the app this way or does it always have to be logged as to and entering to and from work time? On the Debbie side, we do straight time down, uh, down to the tenths place. So if you have, you know, uh, we can, we can input it down to the minute to the second. So whatever you're punching, we obviously have some rules around rounding if you want to, but, uh, turning rounding off and then being able to punch, um, all the way down to the minutes and second. And then you can even choose, you know, uh, codes against certain projects or clients if you want as well. Okay. Thank you, Lori, for your question. All right, any other last minute questions? Lori, you may have had the honor of asking the last question of the day, just checking in the Zoom chat, checking in the Q&A section. All right, well, I appreciate everyone's time this afternoon um, for sitting in with us. Feel free to check us out, deputy.com, onpay.com, first 30 days free on both sides. So sounds good to me um, and have a great day. Bye everyone. Thanks, have a good week.